Hi everybody, Rich Karuba for BowlingBall.com. I now have the pleasure of discussing the career and a little bit about the personal life of one of my best friends on this planet, Johnny Petraglia, PBA Hall of Fame champion, and if, in, for my money and in my mind, one of the best human beings I've ever met. Now, I did an exclusive editorial on John, a written editorial, and it's quite lengthy. Um, and it's right in the Bullversity section of BowlingBall.com. You click on Bullversity, click on Editorials, and then click on the link to the Johnny Petraglia uh, article. Now, what I did, and Johnny was gracious enough to give us some tips for left-handed bowlers, as well as let, allowing us to share some information about Johnny. Now, in the article, I talk about his career, talk about some personal experiences with John, but right here in this video, I think I'll lead off with a little information about the tips that Johnny gave me uh, to share with you. And then maybe I'll tell you a little bit about John. You can read all the information about his historic career, which is continuing, by the way. But right now, let's talk about some tips Johnny gave you for left-handed bowlers. And, and what he wanted to do is to make sure you understand that um, it can be the same thing for right-handed bowlers. He doesn't differentiate. When you bowl on standard USBC house lane conditions, most leagues are bowled on every day around the country, not particular given um, lane conditions for competitive events like serious tournaments, the United States Open Tournament or the United States Bowling Congress National Tournament, and, uh, which travels around the country every year, or even specific uh, tournament groups or organizations that do their own lane conditions specially. Uh, typically on league conditions or house conditions as we call them, Johnny suggests whatever coaching you receive for right-handed or left-handed bowlers, it can, it can apply the same way. Uh, he also told me in his words, and I'm paraphrasing, the exact information that he told me is related accurately in the bowling article, so please read it. Uh, the, the, uh, making adjustments on house conditions really, that you can use parallel adjustment strategies for both left-handed and right-handed players, okay? Uh, and there's articles we have in Bullversity discussing parallel adjustments or just general lane adjustments on dry lanes or oily lanes. And if you check around a little bit, you'll get some of that information to help you if you haven't, uh, if you don't already understand that. If you're already a good bowler and you've understood, you're just curious about some of the tips Johnny gave you, or maybe even you're an upcoming bowler with aspirations to be a professional like John, uh, you know, you can certainly read his tips. But the tips that are specifically related, uh, John also related, is, is, uh, is that when he talks to his pro-am partners or people that he meets around the country and they ask him for some simple tips, one tip he gives to everyone, right or left-handed players, he says, so long uh, as the palm of your bowling hand faces the right wall of the center for left-handed players, palm facing the right-handed wall of the bowling center, but your thumb points up to 12 o'clock when you release your ball, finish in that position. It'll help you, when you complete your follow-through, it'll help you gain hook, additional hook on your bowling ball. You want to hook the ball more, he says you can rotate to a full turn. Right-handed bowlers, the palm faces the left wall. Left-handed bowlers, palm faces the right wall. But don't rotate your thumb that direction, too. The thumb should never change. Pivot around that, keep it pointing straight up to the ceiling and let your palm rotate. By doing that, it'll give you more hook, more axis tilt, more hook on the ball. Simple tips, but they work. And it's amazing when you do it properly, how effective it can be. Now, if you're already a great bowler and you've received, you know, you have these skills, let's talk to you about tournament bowlers now. Because there are generally few, uh, so few left-handed bowlers that enter the tournaments, John suggests that moving from one pair of lanes to the next after success of games requires paying careful attention to, to what the right-handers do, how they make their adjustments. If a right-hander delivers the first ball and comes up light in the pocket, there's more oil in the center lane and likely shooting right-handed side spares for you left-handed players could result in decreased skid distance than on the previous spare. So you'd have to take that into consideration in your adjustments for that spare. Be careful and be aware and ready to make a corresponding adjustment. John says that the opposite would be true too if the right-hander gets to a, a new pair of lanes and you see more hook uh, than, than on the first delivery changing the pairs then your adjustment for that spare on the right side of the lane for you left-handed bowlers uh, will change too. 
He also went on to suggest that when you're bowling on synthetic lanes, expect about two boards of oil carry down during the game. A uh, minimum, two to five boards, he told me, but two boards typically. So the lane actually becomes tighter on the back end. The ball won't hook as much than it will in the beginning of the game. In this case, you have to adjust from two to five boards, and you've got to be ready to do so when you see this reaction developing. And, of course, he passed on left-handed players who bowl on PBA lane conditions or lane patterns like the Viper pattern, as example, is one he told me about. He said, pay close attention to the middle parts of the lane. Skid control is vital to, and uh, more vital than lateral lane adjustments. Many of the successful left-handed players today, in fact, don't use real aggressive bowling balls. They use a mild, regular urethane reactive bowling ball, and they try to get the ball to stand up at the break point, which means quit tilting the axis and begin to roll more straight forward so the ball doesn't sweep into the pocket. It just moves in gradually. You can control the ball from the break point to the pocket more if you don't have the ball migrating and axis tilting as the ball it continues to hook to the pocket. So beyond that, John went on to mention that the PBA lane conditions um, basically force left-handed players to play a skid length control game either by means of a high, high ball speed and loft combination uh, or uh, reducing the amount of active hand action during the release of the ball. So you arrive at the break point and the ball won't hook much from the break point to the pocket. He said on PBA patterns, it's less likely that parallel adjustments can work in comparison to house conditions for left-handed bowlers. So those are the essential tips that he gives when he talks to bowlers around the country. I wanted to share them with you, the article, reinforces this information. Uh, part of that article at the beginning of it talks about a couple of personal things about Johnny. You know, I guess to summarize it, not to go on and on here, uh, there's many bowlers in the PBA Hall of Fame and many bowlers with, with more championships or titles than John, but John's done it for a longer period of time than anyone. No bowler has won a PBA title of any sort in six decades other than John Petraglia. He just did it recently. Uh, and that means he won his first title in the 1960s, and then he went on through the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, 2000, and now after 2010. Six decades. Pretty impressive. To have that type of longevity, you've got to be good. You've got to know your trade. And John is one to keep things simple in his mind. When he's bowling well, he doesn't fight demons. He lets it happen. And when he's struggling or whatever it is, he'll look for solutions. He practices relentlessly, and he exercises and stays in shape. So for a, right now, at the time of this filming, John's a 64-year-old man, but he stays in good tone, good physical condition, and keeps his weight under control, keeps his legs strong. Although he has bad knees, he exercises the muscles around him so he can use his knees in support of his bowling. So staying in shape, dieting right, and getting lots of practice are what John recommends to bowlers who are getting some ears on them. John says, my ball doesn't know how old I am unless I throw the ball in effectively. He said, so if I can stay in shape and get good rhythm, good balance, use my leverage properly through proper technique, and have good releases and a well-practiced, I still can compete. John Petraglia just finished recently in the 2011 PBA National Tour in the top 10 in a tournament using a plastic bowling ball. So just to give you an idea, you can continue to be effective uh, long into your uh, later years if you stay in shape, okay? Now, when you read the article, you'll talk about John being president a couple times of the PBA. He won the Triple Crown event. He's one of just uh, several players to have won all three of the major titles in bowling, the important ones, and that would be the Tournament of Champions and, and the U.S. Open and the PBA National Championship. He also won the World Open Championship. He predicted that one, too. I was with him. He told me he was going to win that tournament because he had a dream about it, and he won it the next week. Pretty remarkable when somebody says that and they actually back it up. Uh, confidence is one thing, but really being totally uh, believing in yourself and understanding that uh, something like that is possible to happen. John is, really has a lot of passion in him. He's a great family man, and I think that's probably the best thing I can say about him. Uh, he loves his wife and kids, and he has done... Uh, everything he can do to provide them the very best in life. So uh, John's been knocked down a few times through the years. He gets back up. He doesn't believe in crying about it. He believes in working and, and using the resources around him to be a better person. And he's donated his life to charities, very uh, many charities, 
uh, and he's dedicated his life to things like the wheelchair veterans from Vietnam, or the, he was once man of the year of the National Leukemia Foundation. Uh, I did a Special Olympics presentation to winners of the Texas Special Olympics in 1979 with John. He and I were the two bowlers selected to join two Dallas Cowboys at the University of Texas uh, in Arlington at the, their gymnasium, and they set it up with 1,500 Special Olympic athletes uh, or received their medals, and John and I awarded the medals to the winners along with the Dallas Cowboy celebrities that were there. And I can tell you that was an emotional time. But that tells me, should, should relate to you the type of person John is, to give back to others, to give back to the game and give back to the community. And that's what's made him a special champion. He's very eager. He's very sociable. If you beat him and you engage him at an outing like a PBA Pro-Am or even at a clinic or a, a, a seminar he does, and Don, John still travels the country. He drives everywhere, and he goes out and sees people every day. He goes to pro shops. He, 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 he still, his representative, Brunswick Corporation, for many years and still does. I don't think he'll ever stop. I think as long as the good Lord gives him legs to walk and, and air to breathe, John will be part of the bowling scene, and it's rare. I predict he will be the next symbol of the PBA uh, in years to come. So, uh, anyway, I just wanted to share with you some information about John. I hope and I haven't. I hope I've done John justice and not uh, put you off in any way. Uh, thank you for taking time to listen to the video, and please read the article. It's a great, it's it's just my salute to a great champion and a great friend, Johnny Petraglia.